Hi, everyone. This is John Landers of T-Bames um, with Connecting Through Music, and I'm here talking with Amy Rivard, who actually performed for us one of our uh, first showcases in uh, New York at the Gibson Guitar Studios on April 11th of 2013. Thanks, Amy, for join taking the time to join us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for telling me the date. I was trying to think, when was that? I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to keep a record of everything from the back in the day. That's so, awesome. What you can remember, what was your first your impression uh, performing for that showcase? I mean, just the space. It was just so amazing to be to be performing there. You know, I never thought I would get the opportunity to perform at Gibson and the sound. Everybody there was so nice um, and just and, and meeting, you know, not just the people that work there, but then meeting everyone in the audience that was there. I'm, I'm so grateful and I thank you for that opportunity. Um, it was just something that I had never thought that I would get the opportunity to do. And I thank T-Beams and you for creating it. Appreciate that. Yeah, it was it was a lot of work putting that together and I really enjoyed doing it. Um, when did you first realize you music was your calling? What, what got you into that? This is a really silly story. But when I was a kid, I remember, you know, you're a bored kid and I was laying under the, 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 the living room table on the floor and I just started to sing Annie but hmm. I wouldn't open my mouth. I went, mm, 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 because I was afraid that I wasn't very good. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't until, and I would sing in the church choir and, you know, I was a girl guide. So we would sing, you know, there or shout, you know, around the campfire. And then when I was in grade eight, my high school teacher wrote a musical called Clover Street. It was kind hmm. of like a side story. And I, I, you know, wanted to be in it. And so I was singing and I, you know, my, my dad said, you know, we just heard this voice come from outside her bedroom and we didn't know she could sing. And, and I got the, I got the lead. And then from there, I, you know, in high school, I went into the musicals and then I was actually going in university. I was debating between psychology and musical theater or, or first opera and then I so I decided to go my first year in university I was in opera and then in my mm. second year I transferred into musical theater and then uh from there you know um that started my career so I guess really you know 12 years old 11 12 years old was when I was like yeah I really I really love this you got to do a lot of stuff uh, river dance celtic woman and and disney yes yes i'm super grateful those were amazing experiences i again like i, I never thought i would get the opportunity to tour around the world um you know uh, live in japan live on a, a an ultra luxury cruise ship or live on a tour bus with 12 other people uh, oh. it, these were absolutely amazing experiences absolutely amazing so uh, what are your, who are your influences in music? I mean, I love, and not just because she's Canadian as well, but Joni Mitchell, I mean, she's just, she, her songwriting is so deep and, and she's just, she's brilliant. Um, I'm a big John Mayer fan. All my friends know that. I, I love his music. Um, I mean, I love 70s and 80s. I love Fleetwood Mac. I mean, that was like the mm. first remember hearing that first songs I ever remember hearing were Fleetwood Mac and um the Stay in the Live soundtrack and uh I mean it's vast I mean today in today's music I think The Weeknd is brilliant um I love uh Imogene Keep um I'm, I'm all over the place but I mean the one the one that stands out just is, is Joni Mitchell for her her poetry her brilliance she's just a genius Good to know. So uh, what have been your challenges in getting into your music career? Any challenges you faced? <laughs> I mean, how many hours do we have, John, really? Yeah. <laughs> Just some, one or two or... Okay, how about like three days? Um, you know, it, it's it's really... I'm doing it all on my own. And unfortunately, I don't play an instrument well enough to, to accompany myself. So... Uh, I have to hire always hire people to play for me at gigs and whatnot and producers to produce the music. You know, I give them like a basis. And actually what I do a lot of the time is I'll sing the 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 line that how I want the guitar to be played or I'll sing how I want, you know, the piano and, and I'll put that in my little my my garage band here or my logic. And hmm. then I'll send that and be like, okay, this is the idea that I'm going for. Um 
and it's my fault. I didn't pick up an instrument. I could still do it. I'm not dead yet. I could, you know, commit to that every day, but I haven't been able to do that. Um, mm. So there's that. I mean, obviously the the financial thing is the biggest challenge because I'm, mo I'm, I'm putting out more money than I'm getting back. I don't think, you know. Uh, as and you're not alone. <laughs> yes, as far as an independent artist. Now, when I'm with, when I'm touring with the show, obviously that's fantastic. I'm I'm making a steady income, doing what I love. Um, but you know, in the last decade, I've been really focusing on my own original music and putting that there. And, you know, that means I'm working a bunch of random part-time jobs to pay, to get this music out there, which mm. if, if, um, I think you need a friend of mine, this was a while ago. He said he would get a million streams. He said a million I can't remember, but you know, it's peanuts. You get like point a fraction of a penny. Yeah, zero 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 one percent, you know, right. per song. So at one point I had a, a an office job. And you know, I put my office computer and my coworker's office computer on in on repeat, nonstop, as often as I could. And yeah. I don't, I might have made five bucks that month. Oh, but I'm grateful. Five bucks is five bucks. I'll take it. You know. So, do you have a, a, a favorite web, uh, media, web, social sites that you feel is most effective for you to get you your know, music out? I think what's YouTube is great because it's free. You know, everybody, but also Spotify is free too. A lot of people don't realize that. They're like, oh, I don't have a Spotify account. And I say, well, you actually can download it for free, but you just have to listen to ads. Mm. Um, and uh so uh, you know youtube I, I think is a good one for me to post because then i know if people will actually go and listen like it's it's easier for them because you want to direct people immediately you don't want them to have to work oh i gotta download an app or, or whatnot and everybody is on youtube but as far as spotify goes i think one thing i, I really try um is um i try to get people to follow my artist page not my you know there's your personal profile don't follow that follow the artist page because then when i release a new song it will be added to your discovery weekly um, uh, so then that way it's being put in there and someone will listen to it because there's only so many times you can ask your friends to listen to your music you know sure. um, yes. and you know like i said this before in in a, a talk i was doing the other day like i don't have taylor swift's budget to yes. for an ad campaign you know i've got my little job rando job that's you know trying to pay for making the music putting the music out like um making keeping a house over my head a roof over my head and paying for food and then so for an ad campaign you know someone just emailed me today and said you know you know we do these great music videos do you want a music video and i was like I have no money for you to make a music video for me. Thank you. Mm. I, I, I just can't. I, I'm at the point in my life where I can't be spending money on music anymore. I have to start thinking about my future, my retirement. Yes. I'd love to come home someday, but in today's today's real estate, it's a crime. Nobody can buy nobody can buy a home. Um, mm. So you know these things. Unfortunately, like they keep me up at night sometimes this week. I couldn't sleep. I was like, okay, stop thinking about this. Stop thinking about this. So I'm really trying to do everything on my own. Like I spent the whole day the other day making uh, a lyric video for my song because I, I know that I can do it. It's going to take time, but you know, I really have to try and work smarter, not harder. I don't know if I'm, if I, I don't know if I've mastered that yet. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. So if anyone has any tips, please email me. <laughs> Um, are you able to reach any online radio networks to play your music? And if so, how, how do you go about that? There's uh, there, uh, not, I, ha I have a couple that actually play for me. Um, my uh, One of my co-writers on some of my songs, Felix Van Dyke, he knows someone. And so we were able to get on one there. But I actually, it's not something I'm super familiar with on how to do that, how to get online. Mm. Um, for Spotify playlists, there's some free websites where you can you know, pitch your song and they'll listen and maybe it'll get added to a playlist and hopefully you'll get some spins from that. But um, that's really it. Um, Are you familiar with uh, Groover.co? No, I'm not. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that info at okay. the end after our, our interview, but uh, yeah, I think that could be a good resource. That would be uh, great. Thank you so much.
Yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, what are you working on today? Anything and any new projects? So I just released uh, my latest song, Cuckoo for You. Um, I'm, it was produced by Sundown Studios. I'm super excited. It's uh, it was a really fun song to make. Um, it's cuckoo, and uh, and so that so then I just like I was saying, I made this lyric video for it the other day, and uh, so I'm releasing that on Monday night, the YouTube premiere. Uh, and I'm super excited about that. So now really what I'm trying to do is figure out how to get that, like you said, like oh, maybe now I'm going to look into online radio, but trying to get it seen and, and heard, you know, somewhere where more people can hear it, you know, yes. um, you know, I, I, commercial radio from what I understand here, you know, that there's like one big corporation that kind of, kind of minds that you know i heart i heart radio is probably the main one yes uh, you know back in the day i mean i'm originally from windsor ontario and and if people know the radio station the big eight that was really how a bunch of artists got their music out there and and her name was Ro rosalie oh my gosh i'm brain farting on her last name oh my gosh forgive me everyone uh and and she actually oh who wrote this song i'm really brain farting at the moment but she picked all of these artists and one time i had the opportunity to assist stevie wonder and so uh. we were talking about windsor you know me being from windsor him being from detroit he being from detroit and uh he said oh yeah do you know the big eight and he was like if you could get your music on that radio you knew you were going to be a star and because the big eight had this huge satellite that reached all over you know parts of north america and so mm. if, if rosalie picked your song then it you were gonna your your music Be was heard. Gonna be out there. So yeah. I'm I have to I'm gonna Google. I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting her last name. I don't know. It, I, I didn't have my coffee yet today. So no worries. Um, yeah. So let me see. Rosalie Trombley. Yes, Rosalie Trombley. So that that's a a big story. She she really opened the door for so many artists. But nowadays you can't you can't go to you know, a, a radio station and ask a DJ, Hey, like, do you like, if he likes your song, he can't play it because from cor corporate controls all that. Yes. No personal, you know, I think you can do that with college radio and that's something I should look into. But as far as like, they're all big machines, they're all, corporate, yes. and they're deciding what you listen to. There's no open, you know, that's model. true. It's limited. Um, yeah. What would you tell a, on someone who wanted to get into music first time right now as a, as a guide? What would you advise a new artist? Uh, you know, it's so, because I know the challenges, like I was saying the other day, if I had a child, I don't know if I would want them to follow this path because I know how challenging it can be. But I also know you have to follow the path that your heart, that's calling your heart, you know? Um, and it doesn't like, and you know, I'm still waiting for her. Hey, tomorrow the right person could hear my song or watch this video and be like, I love this song. I know this person, I'm gonna get it on this radio station. I know those big corporate machines that are gonna play it all over on iHeart or whatever. Um, so advice, you know, I, I think it's maybe finding a balance between security and your dream um, mm -hmm. because you really do need to think about the future as well because, because you're self-employed. So no one's putting in for your pension. Um, these are things that, you know, you have to think about. Yes. And I remember my uncle told me that because I'm self-employed. And he's like, Amy, you like, you got to think about that. He's like, I didn't think about that. And so it's constantly on my mind because I didn't think about it a lot either. So <laughs> that's a whole other story. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I get that. Uh, it, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I'm self-employed. So I, I know what yeah. that's like. Yeah. You know, um, there, was, there was one guy that I met. And he was a teacher for many years. And then he went into his music. And part of me was like, oh, I should have done that. You know, I should have. Because then I'd have like a nice nest egg. And then I could go full tilt kind mm. of a thing. Um, so it's coulda, shoulda, woulda. I, again, you can't live in the past. The more you bring those, you know, think about those things, you're just projecting that into your future. So that's something I'm working on is just really trying to project positive things into the future. Okay. So before we finish up, is there anything else you'd like to share with everyone today? I mean, follow me on Spotify or Apple Music. 
Um, you know, when you do the saves, when you save the songs, when you add them to your playlist, share them with your friends. It's so, people don't realize, like, I am so grateful every time someone shares my song somewhere on Facebook, on Instagram, uses it in their stories. It really helps, you know, because I can't get it out there just by myself. I mean, right now it's just me doing it. And when you have people that share your music, it's just, it's, it's so, um, I, it helps me out. So it helps any artist out so much. And, and I know I'm so grateful and I'm sure other artists are so grateful and, you know, subscribe to my YouTube, like all those, unfortunately, those numbers, people pay attention. They want to see those big numbers and, and mm. uh, it's a different game we're playing these. It's a different world we're in. It's, it's, you know, so when you can just subscribe or follow it, it actually is a really big deal. Um, so I'm on, I'm on all the socials, Instagram, X, uh youtube facebook tumblr if anyone even uses that anymore uh yeah. but but mainly yeah the spotify the apple music ask alexa to play the music of amy rivard and if you say my last name in a way that she'll understand it she might actually play it. Yeah. okay well thank you so much for taking the time today to talk to me thank and you. then everyone and uh um, uh, everyone, thanks uh, for watching, and uh, we'll have more coming down the road. It's connecting through music. Well, have a good day.